On the 1st of December 2019, I uploaded this video. The Female Onision Drama Cycle, originally titled Anything for Clout, a full-blown documentary slash movie slash big YouTube video. A video that took myself and two others five to six days roughly to delve deep into the world of Shani for Christ and her partner Rev or Revelation News. Myself, FabFit Geeky and Lola Bohemia embarked on the exceptionally frustrating journey of not only watching hours and hours of video from Shani and Rev's channels, but we were guests on Grampy Lobster's live streams. We made acquaintances of many a channel that had apparently been laughing and poking fun at Shani in particular for years. The documentary involved diving back as far as four years ago. I even had the pleasure of speaking to Shani's mother on live streams and learned of the erratic and toxic behaviors over the years. It was a one hour and 20 minute beast of a video and I tried to leave as many stones unturned as possible. And not long after releasing this devastating piece, Tweedle, my thigh, bro, and Tweedle, baby carrot, fled the internet. I cannot honestly say whether it was my video that finished the job, but I like to think that it was. After all, I had taken someone who had been causing chaos across the internet for years, abusing her mother, her partners, her attempts to get the G-Man D, which would later devolve into outright blatant racism, her obsession with the life of a free spirit, which would turn into malice and hatred, her ignoring of my olive branch to then slander me with the title quote unquote pedo enabler because I didn't want to address Onision at that particular time. The pair who may or may not be brother and sister, I can't confirm nor deny that, would of course reappear two months later. It's kind of strange, isn't it? It's almost like my body had reacted to their intentions with these two elusive abnormalities appearing on my brain, eh? It's as if the gods placed them there to prevent me from working so I could stay at home from work and produce this video. Only kidding, God works for Shani and is ridding her of her quote-unquote enemies. <laughs> so my enemies go... <laughs> down in the floor but not anything i do no it's god 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 is like taking my enemies down and just <laughs> he's just <laughs> there is a god that's right there is there is no 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 nothing in my head that says there is not a god okay get this a man who harassed me for years, I just found out died. I don't have to worry about him harassing me anymore. He's dead. It was like, it was like when Mo the Pagan died. It's the same feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to have to worry about this woman harassing me ever again. It's the same with the other dude. Okay, so so now that he's taken out like two, two, two of my main enemies out right now. Okay, now here's another thing. My other enemy, everyone can know, aka Charlie Gold. You cannot say anything. My word, Shani, it's not very Christian-like to celebrate anyone's death, let alone pray for it. Of course, now she denies this because that's the thing with Shani for Christ, ladies and gents. In her mind, she can do no wrong and just denies accusations when they are still up on her channel. Shani, you spent an hour live streaming periodically fake crying. What say ye? No, you lack understanding. It didn't happen. I do not envy those who have had her around them all these years. So anyway, why oh why am I making this video? Why am I addressing these two bumbaclats after having said I wouldn't address them on a large scale again? The earth will shake and the heavens will open and Shani and her pet emerge from the darkness. Giant spiders as big as hounds snatch babies in the night. 
Men and women turn on each other. Death itself will begin to roam the plains, and children will live and die in the long night. In other words, Shani decided to reappear, much to everyone's dismay, and proceeded to spread Charlie Gold's docks around, choosing to bat for foodie booty. It's almost as if the entire saga had been pre-planned. I don't know about you, dear viewer, but all of a sudden, Charlie Gold's docks is dropped. Shani and a channel named Fatty Gold, which Chantel would promote via her community tab, a channel that up until recently had a monkey for its avatar, but has now changed it to Charlie's mugshot. So, um, little racist there, hmm? Get called out, did we? Hmm? And change your avatar, did we? Hmm? Hmm? Have a little channel with crap editing and quality? Hmm? Get wrecked, did we? Hmm? Hmm? Yes, it's quite suspicious, isn't it? Almost as if Chantel organized the whole thing. This sudden offensive on Charlie Gold. I mean, how many comments did you approve Chantel of Shani's? And then reply to, and heart, mind you. Still using Shani as your rather rotund attack dog? Well. And ladies and gents, if you thought all this wasn't bad enough, this disgusting, cowardly behavior, if you thought that the years of screeching like a hyena on heat at her supposed friends and partners, and the spreading of Charlie Gold's docs, choosing to obsess over other YouTubers and then turning on them when they pay you no mind, or choosing to slander them, such as myself, for example. If you thought all this and more was bad enough, how about blaming me, Dragnaught, and every one of her quote-unquote detractors for her son's poor mental health? Yes, that's right, folks. Shani for Christ is so devoid of personal responsibility, so utterly dense, so disgustingly lacking in any kind of morals or ethics, she livestreamed in her car, fake crying, screeching into the void we call the internet, asking Drag to please do something, please ask people to stop calling CPS on her and to stop calling her home. Now, personally, I don't believe her when she says trolls have been calling her house. I personally believe that her son, bless him, was likely bullied by you, Shani, and possibly bullied by friends at school that had the horrific and terrifying experience of seeing your quote-unquote promotional material for your OnlyFans that you have posted all over the internet. Or how about that three-minute video that I know CPS has, in which you sit there filming or streaming as your son is in the background crying and asking you to stop as you sit there dismissing him as hormonal, laughing at him and telling him to go away when he's asking you to leave and asking you to leave him alone. I truly hope that boy, in fact both of your kids, are given the love and care that they need. But we will touch more on that later, folks. So anyway, unlike last time, we shan't be delving backwards in time through Shani's history. We shall not be walking the path of destruction that Shani has left in her wake. But rather, we will be taking a closer look at recent history. And we will try our best to laugh at the blatant stupidity, the pitiful attempts at relevancy, the pathetic crying and lying. And we will also be taking a nice goosey gander at her pet, Rev as they tried to achieve, well, I'm not exactly sure what they were trying to achieve. They both possess such little intelligence on every single level that a small child could see through the gaslighting, emotional manipulation, the lies, the stupid misinterpretation of basic information. So to that end, ladies and gentlemen, or whatever you identify as, boys and girls of all ages, Welcome to the Irate Alex channel. This is the final smutdown, Sins of Shani. Shut it, shut it, shut it! Can't you see? 
Yes, round two documentary. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Can't you see? Yes, round two documentary. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Can't you see? Yes, round two documentary. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Can't you see? Yes, round two documentary. <laughs> Crying, 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 you can't stop oversizing Don't sing, crying, 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 you can't stop oversizing <laughs> 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 Yes, round two documentary. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Can't you see? Yes, round two documentary. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Can't you see? Yes, round two documentary. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Can't you see? Yes, round two documentary. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no apologies for that intro. I am, after all, the king of the intros. Anyway, so when Shani reappeared after breaking out of the earth like a discount Godzilla carrying her pet, Rev, one of the first things she did of any note was spread the docks of Charlie Gold, taking this moment as a grand gotcha, and I mean a grand gotcha. You'd think Charlie had been arrested as an axe murderer or something. Well, to be fair, the absolute bollocking Charlie dished out to her naysayers on Rose's Ranton's livestream was truly, truly magical. Fairly sure even I got a little bit moist from that. <laughs> well, Shani really thought she was hot stuff upon her return, celebrating the death of an old enemy. She obviously thinks she's Henry VIII. Well, certainly Henry in his final days. Ha! Get it, Shani? Do you get it, Shani? Henry VIII in his final days, just like you, an overweight, tyrannical gobshite, thinking that he was only second to God. <clears throat> Sorry. Well, let's take a look at Shani's original livestream, shall we? Here I am, naked in, pe in pain, in my bed, and I got some like, not one, not two, but just a bunch of good news and seeing just all my enemies go <laughs> God, God is like taking my enemies down and just fucking just <laughs> He's just <laughs> A man who harassed me for years, I just found out died. I don't have to worry about him harassing me anymore. He's dead. It was like, it was like when Mo the Pagan died. It's the same feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to have to worry about this woman harassing me ever again. It's the same with the other dude. Okay. So, so now that he's taken out like two, two, two of my main enemies out right now. Okay. Now here's another thing. My other enemy, everyone can know, AKA Charlie Gold. You cannot say anything, anything about me going to jail ever again, mother. Never. Charlie Gold went to jail, everyone. Go into my community tab right now and thumbs up it. Charlie Gold went to jail because she was charged with failure of going to court. She was, she written to go to court and she failed to appear. You can say whatever you say about me, okay? I, you can say I'm a mucker who gets mad one time, one time and popped off her man, okay? You can say that, but I ain't stupid like Charlie Gold and decided, oh, I'm not going to go to court. I listen to what the court tells me to do, okay? The court tells you to do something, you do it. Don't be stupid and don't do it. Because if you don't, you'll end up like Charlie Gold and... See, isn't she insufferable? That laugh. Wicked Witch 360 degrees, methinks. Well, what Shani had done here was celebrate Charlie's personal information being spread around like it was New Year's Eve. Unfortunately for Shani, someone flagged her live stream video, thus placing it into restricted mode, meaning the comments were disabled. This didn't stop Shani, though, from posting the same and Charlie's mugshots in her own community tab. 
here are a couple of the screenshots of Foodie Booty with a really, really bad gotcha attempt and also shaming addicts that she can't actually say if they're addicts because she's not a qualified person. Sharing the Fatty Gold account, which at the time still had a monkey face for an avatar. Nice, Chantel. Nice. In the middle, we have our picture perfect example of a good Christian sharing Charlie Gold's incident, which I have blacked out. Yes, Charlie has spoken about this. Hell, I'm even going to show a clip of her defending herself shortly, but it just doesn't feel right showing it. How nice of you, Shani Fanny, to share that around. And on the right, our girl handling backlash as well as you'd expect. And here she's pretty mad after a ton <laughs> of criticism about Charlie's mugshot, but has it in the thumbnail of her video responding to Charlie Gold. Hmm, wow. Doesn't it seem odd to you that Shani and Rev would disappear for two months and then in the same day Chantel, Shani and Fatty Gold all start launching their triangular attack on Charlie Gold. Chantel's weight gotcha which was firmly smashed by Charlie, Shani calling Charlie irresponsible, pot, meat kettle and Fatty Gold some guy or girl with no editing skills and a big old stiffy for Chantal. How did Charlie respond? With class, of course. Be better than me and Amberlynn. Be better than me and the people I talk about. Cause trust me, I'm not perfect. I'm just making better decisions now. But she won't see that. She doesn't want to hear that. She just wants to see, she just wants to be there for the day of my downfall. And that's why she jumped back on YouTube because she thought that day was here. And that's why she's probably mad, just like the other forms are mad that that day didn't happen. I don't have a problem being accountable. That's what people don't realize. We will never have a problem being accountable. The mugshot came on. All right, let me explain. The only reason I addressed it, because I was going to pretend the document didn't happen because I didn't want attention to it, but I saw people tweeting saying mm -hmm. that it wasn't real. Like, I saw my supporters going to bat for me saying it wasn't real. And the last thing I'm about to have my supporters do is be out here fighting for me, and I end up making them look dumb. So I'm like, nope, this was real. Mm -hmm. This is what happened. This is real. They would like you to think this was a murder conviction. It was a traffic ticket violation. <laughs> I never saw a cell. It's called a self-arrest. People can look it up in the state of Florida. It's a self-arrest. All you do... And granted, I'm not proud of this, but truly, I didn't see the court date because I was in the process of moving. <laughs> That's the real reason I didn't see it. And I wasn't checking my mail, and I already handed in my um, old mailbox key. So, like, you know, you have all the bills. Like, at least that's how I look at it. I've been in the mailbox, like, mm -hmm. two weeks. You know what bills are right. <laughs> Every single month, the same bills coming. So mm -hmm. I didn't think I'm missing out on anything, if I'm being completely honest. So I didn't, obviously, I wouldn't have imagined a warrant was coming for me. So when that happened and I found out I had a warrant, I was pissed. I was like, what the fuck? A warrant? This was a traffic violation. Why would I have a court date? And a lot of people don't know. You have a court date for traffic, which was so weird to me. I, in the state of Connecticut, it's not like that. Yeah. So it's, it's like, this is all new to me. So I called a bail bondsman and I said, oh my God, you know, I have a warrant out for my arrest. Like, what's going to happen? Are they going to come to my house? Like, am I going to have to do just... That's how nervous I was because I didn't understand because all I heard was warrant. So I'm thinking orange is a new black. Like, I'm going to <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah. oh my God. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, what am I going to do? And then the lady started laughing and she was just like, you've never been in trouble before, huh? And I was like, no, well, I've never been... My dumb asshole. No, I've never been caught for anything. <laughs> Literally, that's what I said to her. And she starts laughing. She's like, just explain it to you. It's a self-arrest. It's like going to the DMV so you can relax. And I was like, yeah, but it's, it's a warrant. And she's like, that's the term, but I'm trying to tell you, you're fine. You just pay me this amount of money. I'm going to walk you over. You sit there and wait to take your picture. And I was just like, what can I bring my phone? Should I, should I, I even, I was like, should I have my hair in a ponytail? Like, I thought it was like, you know what I'm saying? I really yeah. going down. So I'm like, what do I do? And she's like, no, sweetie, I'm trying to explain to you. And she's laughing because she sees that I'm dead serious. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, just come in. It's fine. I go in fully prepared for them to put shackles on my legs, my hands, everything. I walk in, she walks me over. The lady at the window was so nice. And I'm like, oh, you're nice because you're about to take me down. <laughs> and the lady tells me where I can sit. I'm on my phone the whole time. I'm waiting for someone to come over to tell me to get off my phone. It was nothing like that. I literally sat there watching TV. It really was like being at the DMV. I sat there watching TV on my phone. I was on Twitter. I was on YouTube. And they're like, you know, said, hey, you could come on in. And um, the officer was really nice. He was like, yeah, you can stand right there. He took a picture. Um, And I had my bag. He was like, you can get comfortable. You can put your bag down. And I was like, okay, I guess, you know, because I'm like, I know I'm going down. You know, even though it's a traffic violation, I'm like, I know I'm going down. He's like, yeah, you can put it down anywhere. Put it down. Never check my bag, by the way. This is how much the self-arrest is like not an arrest because they're so lenient. Never check my bag. Never check anything. Never patted me down. Put my bag down. And I'm like, okay, okay. And he's like, he took the first picture. The, the officer was so nice. He knew I wouldn't like the first picture. And he was like, do you want to see it? And I looked at it and I was like, oh. And he was like, we can do another one. And then I was like, listen, I'm, if you keep giving me the option, we're going to keep taking pictures. So whatever this one is, let's do it. And he was like, you're right. Let's just do it. And he took that picture. Obviously, I didn't have makeup on. I wasn't thinking. I never thought I'd be docs or else I would have went in with a full beat. Honestly, <laughs> I was not thinking. So um, he let me take the picture. Obviously, took your fingerprint. And he was like, yeah, well, we send the court date to you. Um, you're good to go. And I'm like, really? And I'm like, but I'm going to my friend's wedding. Are they going to send the court date while I'm there? Because then I'm going to get in trouble again. I just want to let you know I'm going. Like, I'm explaining him my whole itinerary. I'm like, this is where I'm going. I'm going to be in Tennessee. Um, this is the flight. And he's like, I don't need to know that. <laughs> like, I don't need to know that. <laughs> he was like, you're fine. And even he caught on that I don't get in trouble. He's like, you've never been in trouble, huh? And I was just like, no. And he was like, it's fine. I don't need to know your itinerary. Charlie, ever the classy lady with sound explanations for everything with receipts. 
Gotta love that merch too. So, um, Shanny Baggy Granny Fanny, I don't wish to echo Omegon's points as he expertly dressed down all involved in this in his standalone video, which of course I will link below. But firstly, Shani, do you really think this was a win? Do you? Answer that question honestly for once, because like Omegon, I too happen to stand against doxing. I unequivocally, decisively, explicitly stand against doxing and its far more dangerous counterpart, swassing, which could have happened. The people who do this instead of engaging with or in YouTube's usual response video methodry, engage at if you cannot defeat someone's ideas, if you cannot debunk them, if you cannot prove them morally reprehensible more so than you, and then you then decide to dox slash or spread personal information around the internet or elsewhere, you are proving that not only are you a coward of astronomical proportions, but you are proving without a shadow of a doubt that you are a stupid, weak, are of low cunning, low wit, lack spine, and do not possess a moral compass at all. Secondly, Chantal, if you cannot solely keep your criticism honest and direct, and are incapable of parody and satire, if you are unable to use dirty argument tactics like gaslighting, like straw manning and so on, then just keep shoveling food into your gob, you talentless hack. And finally, and thirdly, and certainly the least, Fatty Gold or any other would-be parody channels, make your videos, parodying creators, call people out if you want to, I support that 100%, but what I do not support is blatant racism and the spreading of personal information. But do not think for one second that you, Chantel or Shani, look good in all this. Because you don't. And if history remembers this extremely petty drama, let's hope that it doesn't because it won't show me or Charlie or anyone who stood against you in a bad light. about my dick size. Baby carrot dick. I have a baby dick. Okay? Baby carrot dick. Baby carrot dick. I have a baby dick. Okay? Whoa. Baby carrot dick. Jenny called and she got the meth. She said, I got an understanding, yah, about Shani. Well, I rushed to the window and I looked outside. And I could hardly believe my bloody eyes. A big old trailer pulled up into Shani's drive. Twenty-four years just looking for a chance. <laughs> oh, oh, hello! When did you lot walk in? Did you take your shoes off? No? You disgusting animals! I'd really like to know how you lot keep getting in. Oh wait, that's that pesky, incesty brother of mine who keeps leaving the bloody door open. Well, you may as well each grab a duster and help yourself to some cleaning whilst you're here. Don't mind me, I was just getting all nostalgic about the first time I saw Shani. I died! <laughs> and then Incest Boy rebuilt me into this fine specimen you see before you. The Alpha and Omega! <laughs> Good times! Good times. I have, however, heard on the grapevine that Shaggy Baggy Titty Cups is back in action with her baby carrot pet, Rev! How are you, darlings? I heard you pair of absolute knob gobblers started in OnlyFans. No one! Literally no one, no one in the freaking universe asked or wanted to see that! My eyes were molested by these images. Twitter is a deadly place, I tell thee! I also heard that uh, OnlyFans was hacked. <laughs> 
Oh dear. It gave birth to this video. You do. <laughs> Full alcohol. Oh yeah. That's okay. okay. I paid my dues. In full, prof, you did in full. <laughs> and as Professor Jumbo, wow, wow. <laughs> I don't need nobody to tell me. I deserve some accolades. Yeah, prof, you do deserve some accolades. Accolades? Full accolades. Oh, yeah. Accolades? Yes, accolades. <laughs> anyway, I have it on account that Alex wanted to set up an OnlyFans in the hopes of seeing you off and proving he could get more subscribers for mostly jokey content with the odd cheeky wiki snazzy wazzy lewd of himself to add a bit of spice do it here I'll show you the parody pics that would have outdone you both See? Fabulous! Much thanks to Necroso Collins for those terrifying images! <laughs> Alex did email only fans to see if they could set up the account to give solely to charity. And if that didn't work, then Alex was going to input his bank details and would have given half to charity because, you know, he's, 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 he's a thought. He's a thought. So instead of that, Below in the description you will find the link to Make-A-Wish, the same charity that Alex raised money for recently on Twitch. No obligations or anything, so don't feel guilt! I'll call you a peasant regardless! <laughs> well anyway, the topic of Rev's giggle stick came up recently after he was trolled by one of the broken toys. You know who you are, you cheeky devil webble, you. <laughs> Imagine, if you will, for just a moment, ladies and gents, that you would allow someone on the internet to get to you so much about the size of your phallus that you would not only explain in a tweet the genetics of why you're rocking an itty bitty snitty noodle, but to get so angry that you would upload a video about it. Is one feeling insecure, Rev? Oh dear. Can I say that my first week as a sex worker has been extremely eventful and I love it. Did you hear that, ladies? Sign up now! Rev is now a bona fide motion <laughs> fun time worker. Do I hear $50 for a nude lewd ladies? Do I hear 40? Uh, 30? Uh, 20? 10? 5? Okay, final offer. 1. Bloody. I can't even give them away, Rev. But there's an issue with the haters, okay? <coughs> Only those of low intelligence would dismiss their criticizers and detractors as haters. It's okay, feel free to quote me, you don't even need to credit me. So Twitter has been on fire about my dick size. Has it really, Rev? Twitter? On fire? Talking about you? Really? How many people talking about your wee willy winky does it take to fit the bill exactly? And uh, uh, this one idiot frog avatar moron said that I had a baby carrot for a dick. Sir, I would appreciate it if you didn't speak about one of my followers and subscribers in such a derogatory manner. You are the one who bit, sir. You could have ignored but you chose to bite again. Low intelligence people dismiss great points as Michos. The average penis size in the world is 4.6 to 6 inches. 
That's the margin. Imagine feeling the need to not only tweet about this, but to make a whole video about it. Rev, you could have ignored this. You could have gone about your day, but living off of inheritance money and a life of leisure leaves you rather bored, I would imagine. Good lord, I mean good me! I wouldn't emasculate you so hard usually, but you are a bit of a cheb end, aren't you? I mean, you did insinuate that Alex was the great leader of the DIA, Drama Investigation Agency. <laughs> or is it the DI Bureau, the DIB? <laughs> that he is somehow paying others to do his research for him. No, no, don't be so silly. We forced them to work for us. Only joking, Alex has that cheeky smile and the peasants just volunteer. Or maybe they hate you so much they willingly assist. <laughs> Who knows what Alex does? Also, does Shani only allow you to film your videos in the toilet or something? Good grief! I bet the acoustics in the lavatory are just fabulous. <laughs> So, hey folks, there's a new term out there that I'm not sure if you're aware of, but I need to make you aware of it. You know what I mean? So I'm going to do that right now. And you need to thank me because it turns out that social media and the internet's getting really disgusting, okay? But I noticed that something really changed in the environment of social media. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean it's getting disgusting? Did your missus not spread around the docks of Charlie Gold the other day? That's not disgusting to you? Oh, sorry, disgusting? Or your girl's nudes and lewds, they made their way onto my Twitter feed. I did not consent, sir. It was like watching a deranged meerkat fight a really sweaty rhino. It was like watching cheese melt onto ice cream and then somebody stuck their willy in it. This new, I guess you can call it a career to some people. The term is drama investigator. In a world where one girly headed man thing stands against the entire internet, in the hopes of stopping the D.I.P., the drummer investigator Bioro works against Rev and his darling Shani in a battle of hope, courage, and pictures of baby carrots. This summer, the insecure hippie versus the entire world wide web. I see a lot of people using that label now. I'm a drama investigator. So what does that mean exactly? I'll tell you what it means, okay? Because it's pretty obvious what it means. Literally no one, Rev, no one has ever in the history of man has ever used that term about anything or anyone. Well, maybe real stream news, but we shan't be talking about him. And Rev, please, please tell us what it means, darling. Drama investigators are people on the internet that have literally no life of their own. I think they live off government assistance. Oh yeah, there's an L for you. If you're a drama investigator, you're a loser. The 90s called Rev, they want their hand symbol insult back. These people living rent free in your head, Rev. Ugh. Are they imaginative? Did you make these people up to satisfy some urge or need to fight a great battle against an impending evil? Has your time struggling to get inside of Shani starved you of oxygen, sir? You're a loser in life. You never did anything. Now, people could say that about me. You just have money because your mom died and whatever. Well, number one, I took care of her for three years with cancer, which is fucking heart-wrenching if you love the person. You mean to tell me you did something that you're supposed to do? Oh, by me. Taking credit for things that you're supposed to do, Rev. Really? You are a cretinous dirtbag who needs to pressure wash his partner as soon as possible. You lack the intelligence needed to hold a coherent conversation, sir. How is it that Alex 
has had the patience to respond to this video on Twitch. Ah, oh, well, anyway, I've had my fill of rev, Alex. You can take them back now. <laughs> Bloody sweaty animals. And you peasants, guess what time it is? It's get out of Lord Bear's Manor time. Get out. Get out of my house. I need to shower. I've got to wash the hippie off my body. Cheerio. <sighs> Sigh. Irit Alex reached out to me not long ago and requested that I partake in what I believe is being called the final smut down. I regret coming up with that name because it meant I would have to spend an inordinate amount of time going through content I would otherwise not bother with to best understand someone that I barely knew anything about. In fact, the only stuff I knew of this person came courtesy of Alex and Fab Fit Geeky. <sighs> Thankfully, Alex took the opportunity and the liberty on his um, gay op server to link me more relevant details about what he believed I could talk about to make certain points. Thankfully for all of you, I have very little interest in playing any of the clips because I really can't be bothered. But also because of the very first video we're going to address in this debacle on victimhood and that dreaded, blasted, blame game. Along with the odd lie or two and, uh, yeah, the accusations, which seems quite nebulous, I am very much aware of that. Thankfully, I'm going to cover it. But first, I'm going to play a clip. Yes, I'm kind of going back a little, but I'm not going to play as much as Alex wanted because I think he wanted me to go real deep. No, I want to play a clip to show just how little you understand something, and by doing so, I am better able to then debunk it because it's very important and will help me lead on to a very important point. Back to what I was talking about with Google changing things. So the drama communities, they're gone. We can finally put out content, guys, and not be disrupted. So it says here, many of our services allow you to interact with others. We want to maintain a respectful environment for everyone, which means we must follow these basic rules of conduct, comply with applicable laws, including export control, sanctions, and human trafficking laws. That's that's a good one. Respect the rights of others, including privacy and intellectual property rights, which means you can't be playing our videos no more. It says don't abuse, harm, interfere with, or disrupt services. Huh? Permission to use your content. Nice. Oh my God. Did you hear that? Permission to use your content, guys. As you can tell, from the high intellect I'm dealing with here. Um, Shani has um, an incredible talent for what I believe Alex might call a cheap gotcha. Right. Um, Google's terms of service are quite something, but they are not entirely the terms of service that we YouTubers obey. We sign up to YouTube's terms of service. There is a vast difference most notably the fair use policy. Now there are community guidelines that are entirely relevant when discussing what other people do on this platform. And because of fair use, we are allowed to go into that person's channel, use their content to make points either against them or to illustrate a different point entirely. If Google implemented those rules on YouTube, YouTube wouldn't be YouTube anymore, would it? I think I've made my point, but I might just rail on you a little more. To believe that Google's terms of service supersede that of YouTube's on YouTube, even though Google owns YouTube, which is probably where you think your leg to stand on comes from, is so stupid, I honestly believed it was up there with any of your many subscribers to your OnlyFans account. Do I need to say many again? 
Do I need air quotes or do I need a sarcasm sign? As one final point actually about the entire misunderstanding of Google's rule, let's say we implement that on YouTube and then YouTube stops being YouTube. You'd be struck off the platform very quickly. Your own content would be the evidence against you because of the attacks you have made towards others. So it might be a good idea to look in a mirror and decide for yourself if you have so much as a leg to stand on when it comes to using Google's terms of service to stop people reacting to you because Google's own rules would ruin you. Moving on. Okay, so the next part I want to address, and it does involve clips going against what I said earlier, blame Alex, he told me I had to do this, or he would pin me down and I'm not going to finish that sentence. We're going to cover a number of things from a five hour stream, which I have to say from the face of it. That is some commitment to the cause. I can barely stream two hours before I get sleepy, but five, I mean, I kind of get it actually, you were in your bed. And for a lot of it, I was slightly concerned that you weren't wearing any clothes. And while I'm all in favor of body positivity, I have limits. There are a number of clips I'm going to take from the stream, and something I also want to address that's also there, but I'm not going to play. But I'm going to give you a timestamp if you're at all interested in going there to look at it. The first thing we're going to address, though, is this clip. We'll say to certain people, please just stop. This isn't good for the children. You know, it's not good for your children either seeing you do this to others. Do you really want to teach your children to be vicious and malicious to people? To me, this reeks of manipulation. It is top tier, top shelf, hillbilly manipulation. It's the kind I expect someone to purchase from Dollar Tree or for the UK viewers, Poundland. Possibly Pound Stretcher if it's in the reduced basket. I don't have strength left. You know, I keep telling people, I don't I don't have strength to do this shit anymore. So, what do you expect me to do? I'm, I'm facing getting tested for MS. I can't walk for more than an hour without fucking falling down. So, I don't know. Thank you, Elizabeth Ford. I will get through it. It's just, you know when it's like one thing after another thing after another thing and you've just had it? That's where I am. And it was so awful because it was like crying, walking the whole time. Because, like I said, I, I sprained both freaking ankles. So it's like sprained ankles. I just, all this crap, and I just want it to end. Because you're always the victim here? I just want to say now, because this actually bugs me, earlier in the stream, in a clip I won't play, because there's a word you use and a way you say it that I cannot, I cannot show it. Because Alex wants this to get monetized, and I have to be careful. But near the start... You'd use mental issues as an excuse for behavior. To play the victim, one does not use references to ending one's life as flippantly as you do. You are, because of the way you do it, arguably in the same region as an emo. Except the majority of emos put a lot of time into how they look. And quite frankly, the way you portray your issues undermines the issues you have because you just fob them all off and use them and this actually bugs me with a lot of people. Get a room of people together, say 50 people. Groups will form, perhaps. But people will sometimes talk, and when they talk, they then talk about their issues. We are, as a population, understanding mental health a lot more. In the UK, we have parity of esteem, which means more time and more effort is being put into understanding mental issues as equal to that of physical. Inevitably, within all groups, there will be a contest to see who has the most problems, which is where you fit in because you're one of those people. It doesn't matter how many issues you have, only that a solution can be found to help you. It is not a contest and it is not a bragging right, especially with what you have said you have done. And to play the victim with these in the way you play victim besmirches your issues. Seek to solve them, don't seek to milk them. Nurtured, yes. and that's why you are the way you are. You're never nurtured by your mother. 
No, and I'll never be nurtured by her. My mommy is going to give you a great big kiss and hug. You know, and she did all this. She's the main culprit of why CPS was continually in our faces. You fucked up my kids, mom. And you weren't even you weren't even really in their life. And you fucked them up. That's how much of an awful human being you are. You fuck people up and they're not even in your life. Like, let me ask you this, mom. Why did you used to pull my arm out of the socket and then put it back in? What did I do to you as a child to deserve that treatment? While I can totally respect that mothers, if they do what you say they did, let's say she did, did that to you, it does not excuse your actions and your behavior. It does mean you have grown up with a mountain of problems, all of which you should seek to fix instead of seeking to blame. Assigning blame doesn't solve the problem, because then the problem is still there because you haven't actually addressed it. You fobbed it off. And before we get to the last clip, because there is one more I want to address, between these two clips, in fact, you did a test. A personality test. And you kind of lied your way through it. I'm not showing clips of it, it's cringe. But I will give you a timestamp. 31 minutes, 57 seconds to 42 minutes and 2 seconds. That's a lot of time, none of which I'm going to play. To Shani, a personality test is not like Pottermore, where you desperately want to get sorted into the house you think you belong in, instead of the house you deserve to be in. You don't get to balls up a test over and over again to redo it over and over again to get what you're looking for. By the way, I was a Gryffindor. By all means, tell me the houses you all belong to. To the final clip. Is fine, and she's like, I know it's nothing but love, and it really is. I love it. I love taking care of people and helping people. My life, it's all I've ever been. Advocates can often be found engaging in rescue efforts and doing charity work, trying to rescue Amberlynn Reed and Chantel from Charlie Gold and Life of a Free Spirit charity work. I'm known for charity, I've given all of you guys money. <laughs> Weird flex, but okay. Let's move on from this because there's more. Do best protect oneself. Shani is using all the resources at her disposal to get everyone on her side, going so far as to reach out to the FBI on Twitter who will totally take her seriously when they get to her after they're busy providing sources to all those bloody crime shows, and of course investigating that horrible orange blonde man with the massive booty. And on that subject, when the FBI don't respond to her, she reaches out to the man with the booty. After reaching out to the um, police in Tokyo, I'm not sure they have the jurisdiction, but sure. Reach out to whomever you wish. What you are the victim of on YouTube, if we're going to consider you a victim for a moment, is criticism. People see what you do, and they call you out for it. And because it has happened so much, because you've been called out so often, because the mistakes have piled up and they have stacked up and they've gotten worse for you. You have sought to mitigate it by reaching out to law enforcement and POTUS, and you've taken it international because why not? To try and find a way to get people on your side, either as a means to scare others to not talk about you, or because you don't realize that this just furthers the belief that you are a glorious lol cow. And while I'm very much aware you've been cozying up with Amy Ramadan, while I know you've been, <clears throat> I would say colluding, but I don't believe that's the correct word, getting close to Foodie Beauty, who, as we all know, is total legitness when it comes to being taken seriously on YouTube. Didn't she cross borders just to get food? Did Canada run out of food already? Hmm. None of this actually helps you in the long run, because while you're busy trying desperately to get this attention, which furthers a point where you flex about knowing bigger YouTubers, which I doubt you actually know at all, you know them like the local oik knows the owner of the house they're squatting in. You don't know them at all. You are but an ant underneath their Doc Martens. There is one last thing I want to talk about, and it's called false flagging and doxing. I'm not a fan of either, and you're a part of it. So let's address that. So last week I did a video on Charlie Gold and the doxing around that. I'm not a fan of it. I'm sure Alex will very kindly link that video down in the description. 
as far as I'm concerned, anyone who shares a dox to then use it to make grand points, all of which were utterly bogus, is a coward. Your return to YouTube was just that, wasn't it? I know this, because I was going to use it in my Charlie Gold video, but then decided you're really not worth my time. This is as much of my time as you get. I know for a fact you false flagged Alex, something which he pointed out on Twitter, where he also got a bit angry and threatened CPS, but I won't get into that, that's for somebody else. I have for you a simple piece of advice. Stop it. Do not false flag people because you don't understand the fair use rules, because you don't understand what criticism is and because you've allowed criticism to consume you. Change your behaviours in your real life, actually change, and they won't go for you, will they? Stop blaming everyone else for your problems, accept responsibility, and grow up. Now, thank you very much to Alex for the time. I do apologise that I've prattled on for as long as I have. Don't bother linking me, I don't care enough. Have a lovely day, everyone. Back to you, Alex. Thank you very much, Omegon, for covering that for me. Very much appreciated. Please do make sure you go and subscribe to Omegon, guys, if you already haven't done so. The silkiest, butteriest voice on YouTube, ladies and gents. Now, for those watching, I think I may have unironically issued trigger warnings prior to video or sections of a video, maybe three times. And this is another one of those times, unfortunately. What I'm about to show you and talk about is, well, for lack of a better term, child neglect. This made me angry. It made my fellow content creators angry. It angered entire fan bases. What I'm about to show you are recent examples of Shani for Christ choosing to livestream in a car wherein she begs Dragnaught to issue a statement to other YouTubers to stop covering their live streams in videos due to her son having very dark thoughts. In fact, the drive was to apparently take Shani's eldest for assessment at a crisis center. Shani takes zero responsibility in this live stream because it's totally normal to live stream when these things happen, Shani. <sighs> and she blamed us for it. She fake cries. She gives away that she's not in Tokyo. She screams in a erratic tone in front of her kid. What I'm trying to say is, guys, is I'm going to show you three videos. Two from that day, a picture of her stream afterwards, and something from her past, which really shows what kind of mother Shani actually is. I know there are many within the Broken Toys who have experienced awful and indescribable trauma as children and older. It's why I call you the Broken Toys. After the Amos Yee videos, Broken Toys just made sense. So, and I say this unironically too, if things of this nature trigger you, please pause the video, go to the description, and seek forward to the last part of this video. There will be a timestamp there for you to go off of. Now, if you're still here, well, let me show you. Guys, right now I am driving to get my son a mental evaluation In a quarter mile, turn because right he wants to kill himself because of everything that's been going on and all the CPS you try to put in her life. Children shouldn't have to fear about losing their parents all the time. No. And now he's going for a mental evaluation. And I, I, right I'm making this video to ask Drag, please stop for my son's sake. Yeah, everybody. Everyone, and drag. please, yeah. please stop. Okay, <laughs> I don't want my son to kill himself because you are... are condoning people harassing my family and you keeping on with this you're just going to continue with these people ha having these people harass our family i don't want my son to die i don't and even if i went off the internet it still continues you still harass me on my phone all the time yep. so drag please put an end of this be the man i know you are i know you have integrity drag for my son's sake please stop and if you think i'm lying i'm not continue he doesn't want my son doesn't want to go on camera but he would say what just happened to him and it's because of you guys because he can't take the stress anymore none of us can take the stress anymore okay you're making authorities 
harass and abuse us, okay? For no reason. No reason. Do you have anything to say, Will? No. No, he want, he, I, I agree with him. He said I, he would, but he doesn't want to because it would just be more harassment from you people. You are a liar and a hypocrite. You do everything you claim others do. No, a you're not. I'm a liar, Will, you're not. about this you're situation. Not. No, you're not a liar and a hypocrite. No, you're not. But you know what? You can say I'm a liar all you want. I'm asking as a mother, as a mother, as one parent to another to stop yeah. for their sake. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want my son. I mean, yeah. I have papers and papers in my hand over safeguarding my fucking home from suicide. Yeah. Does that say anything? Please, you wanna... drag, put a statement out at least. Leave my family alone. Shannon. Something. Be a man. Be a human being. Take a breath and look at the license plate. Pete. My son tried to commit suicide because you idiots no, on the internet. Not try, tried. but but think it. And now we're taking him to get evaluated because of you guys. And I'm asking Drag and everyone else involved to please stop for my children's sake. Yeah, leave us alone for the children's sake, please. I'm asking Drag to put out statements to leave our family alone. He doesn't condone this. I'm asking someone to do something. Okay, I know I'm Shanny for Christ. I know you guys don't like me, but my son doesn't have to die because of this. Stop. You just ran over. So, he's on suicide rush right now, and we're picking up my youngest, and that's what's going on. And I'm going to go home, and I'm just, I don't know. You're going to relax at home, honey, with Zach. <laughs> that's what you're going to do. You're going to relax with Zachary, okay? <laughs> what if they keep him for a week? They're not going to keep him for a week, but they might come 72 hours, and I think they should. He can't be in our house when he's talking about stabbing himself, Shannon. He can't be in the house. Because he could oh. he could do it. I know. Do you, do you understand, baby? I know. I, know I don't care. Doing. They've already ruined my son. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want him to do this. I didn't want him to go through the same things I did. I know. My mom used to lie to doctors and say that I wasn't suicidal. Oh. She didn't want a daughter who she didn't want a daughter that was known to be crazy. I just need I need hope. I need hope. I need love. Yeah. I, I need prayers. Yeah, I should talk to Pastor Patrick and get some prayer cuz he's a yeah. he is a prayer warrior and he said he's willing to meet me in person. Yeah. He is. Yeah. North Carolina. <laughs> And I couldn't even, this is the worst part. I couldn't even sit in that room with him because it triggered my PTSD so bad that I was having a panic attack in the middle of the fucking hospital. Before I respond, I'm going to show one more clip to really drive home Shani's mothering capabilities here, and it may also give us a clue as to where Will's mental health issues might come from. And then I'm going to let FabFit Geeky show us what true rage looks like, and then that's when I will respond. Turns out, false alarm, he wasn't looking at the porno. His pants fell down, and his brother saw his ass crack. And his brother's always trying to get him in trouble, so he narked at him and said that he mooned his brother. And I don't get why kids are always arguing with each other all the time. I don't get it. I don't get it. And I will never get it. Why you do this? I'm tired of being shown on the internet. And I don't understand why the kids are crazy right now. Anyway. Motherhood is fantastic. My sons are turning into men and becoming big bullhards. So that's great. <laughs> when the hormones kick in, like William, he's... I gotta stop talking about him. He doesn't like it. Don't fucking say a word. He can spread facts. Anyway teenagers 
Yes, he's turning 12. So now he thinks he like knows everything. And all I get like grunts. And now he's like getting so like everything I do, everything I do embarrasses him. Everything I do embarrasses him. Like, mom, I don't want you to go into my school. Why not? Because. O okay. Mom, why do you have to go in the grocery store with me? What? Everything I do embarrasses him. And I know it's a stage. And then there's my youngest, and he's always trying to get his brother in trouble. Like, why are you trying to get your brother in trouble all the time? Like, why? But he doesn't like it when I talk about it, so I'm just going to leave it there. So motherhood is wonderful. <laughs> I've stuck in ruining people for years. What am I doing, William? Please let me know. I'm not doing anything. Go away. Go, go, go be I hormonal somewhere else. I'm not doing anything, William. Just leave me alone. How about you leave me alone? I am leaving you alone, obviously. You're the one who's talking about me. I'm okay, gonna I'm, I'm going to leave. Someone is going to get in trouble now for yelling at me. One minute. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let that video sink in for you. This is indeed William, the very same child that was just dropped off at a crisis center because he's struggling with his mental health currently. And as you saw in that video, he kept exclaiming to his mother to stop filming him and putting him on her channel. And yet, how did she respond, folks? She kept doing this one thing, the one thing that he asked for her to not to do. She laughed at him for him to be able to hear her to laugh as you heard they were interacting with each other. He heard her laughing at him at his request for her to stop filming him. And then she ended it by saying, I've got to go because somebody's getting in trouble for back talking to their mother. He was asking you to stop filming, Shannon. And you wonder why. He's struggling with his mental health. It's because of you. This is the reason why your child is struggling with his mental health. You are the issue. You are the cause behind it. Not anybody on YouTube. It's you, your actions, how you choose to interact with your children, and how you choose to interact with the internet. Thank you, Fab Fit Geeky, for letting me take that section of your video. Fab's video on this, guys truly fantastic there's nothing quite like fab when she's pissed off it truly was a video of passion controlled aggression and is profoundly touching she's linked in the description guys go subscribe she deserves it especially after that epic rant now unsurprisingly enough both shani and rev made response videos each to act in the most condescending manner imaginable to fab notice how they beg drag for help not responding to his call out but fab and only fab they clearly think she's a soft touch and won't do anything about it the arrogance is truly astounding with those two we won't be looking at those videos though so let's respond accordingly shall we Firstly, Shani, I've got news for you. Most parents' first thought when they get on the road to take their son or daughter or whatever to a crisis center when their kid is having the darkest of dark thoughts isn't, let's live stream and blame it on Dragnaut and everyone else who makes videos about us whilst begging that the same person do something about it. Secondly, do you not realize that acting in an irrational manner, screaming that your son is going to fucking die in front of him is not a good idea, Shani? Keeping him calm, talking to him if he will respond, or holding his hand, reassuring him through verbal and physical means in the back seat, Shani! Can't we fit in the back seat? Okay, and guys, obviously, that was two live streams I mashed together, sped up and chopped bits out of. But there is a bit where Rev feels the need to keep maintaining the narrative that they're living in Japan. You know, after Shani films the car in front of them, 
on a very American looking intersection. Really guys? Really? I mean, can you believe the selfishness, the audacity, the utter cheek of Shani to blame Dragnaught and everyone else for their son's dark thoughts? And what they mean by everyone else is me. Um, Shani, I don't talk about your kids. I don't call your house. I've never spoken to any of you. What I do is, is criticize you for lying, for fake crying and manipulation. I make fun of you because you are utterly blinded by your own wall of delusions. You sit there, streaming multiple times a day for hours and hours, crocodile tears, talking smack against your own mother, your ex-husband, starting crap with Charlie Gold, starting your shit with the life of a free spirit, whilst railing against people who do the same to you. You are a hypocrite and a waste of skin and an oxygen thief. Who's seeing to the kids whilst you're doing this? Who's seeing to the kids when Rev is pretending to hang out the back of you to then upload this disgusting filth to Twitter and to your OnlyFans, huh? Can you answer me that, I wonder? Are people harassing you? Are they sending your videos, your live streams to CPS? Because they're concerned about your children? Who, by the way, Will, you went home, started yet another live stream to game. In the chat, you said you had nothing better to do. You were naked under the bedsheets and you were on Twitter tweeting at Shane Dawson. You were live streaming and tweeting at eCelebs whilst your son was in the hospital under mental evaluation for suicidal thoughts. And you wonder, you fucking wonder why we make videos about you. Are you kidding me? Are you taking the piss, Shani? And making it all about you in the car. Making it all about your apparent abuse at the hands of your mother. Meanwhile, that little boy, that little child is your son. What kind of parent are you? How stupid are you? And then, guys, and then, when they pick Will up, they return home to live stream again for over five hours, wherein Shani lies to a personality test, making out she's such a wonderful person as usual, fake crying again about her mother, perpetuates more victimhood about herself, whilst Rev sits there like the yes man bitch that he is, and even suggests that she's somehow Amberlynn Reed's and Chantel's saviour. Ah yeah, Shani for Christ. The unstable, mess-making excuses for herself constantly, never taking any responsibility, is the hero of her own story. I've got BPD, I've got my fibro, I've got MS, I've got this, I've got that. Excuses, Shani! You are nothing but excuses. Plenty of mothers out there, including many in my own audience, have borderline personality disorder. And unlike you, they actually drag their backsides out to get help and get on with it. You don't even have a diagnosis for MS or Mephobo. You do nothing to help yourself. You just sit there playing your game or staring at the chat or spread the docs of Charlie Gold around while sucking up to another scumbag like Foodie Booty. All the while, little yes man Rev sits there making his videos in the bathroom crying about how people on the internet said he has a little carrot dick or how supposedly me, I'm supposedly paying my drama investigators to do my research for me. You two, you two shouldn't be parents. You don't. You don't deserve to be. You're impossible, Shani. You've been doing this for years. Not just me, Drag, Grampy Lobster, so many have tried to tell you. You damage yourself by not getting help. Instead, you just tell the internet that you need help. But you do nothing about it. And as I sit here, out of breath and dizzy, and my face feels like it's melting and I'm slurring my words while I say this. <sighs> Instead, you tell the internet all about your problems. You are a lost 
cause at this point, incapable of any level of self-reflection or want or desire for self-improvement. One day your kids will grow up and see all of this. Did you ever consider that, Shani, I wonder? Or did you ever consider that perhaps your kids, friends at school, if they're even allowed to go to school, could possibly be making fun of them because they saw on Twitter how their morbidly obese, alcoholic, crazy mother uploaded videos of herself naked. Or they saw on YouTube the pitiful attempts at censoring your promotional material, hmm? No, 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 of course not. Did you ever consider that the live streaming, the screaming into the mic about my abuse, my fibro, my MS, my excuse after excuse to crocodile tears and all that might be damaging them? How I know that there are videos of you screaming at them and not stopping over very, very petty things. Mama needs to live stream, get your ass in there. One of her kids has autism, by the way, folks. Why would anyone call CPS on me? Well, gee, Shani, I have literally no idea. <sighs> I hope those children receive all the love and help they need. Not from you or Rev, because quite frankly, I wouldn't trust either of you with a pet hamster. There's still a lot I left out for this video, guys and gals, and that's okay. It would have gone on forever if I had kept adding bits to it. You know, at first I damn near exploded when she said me and Drag were protected by YouTube. Many a meme about us being government agents were told. It was quite funny. It's funny too. Shani and Rev said that I, me, belong, spe specifically me, belong in jail for my video content. Can you imagine? <laughs> This is how deranged Shani is. But don't worry, Shani, I don't have any police footage this time. You're lucky I don't show your criminal record, girly. Oh, by the way, you won't get me with the same pathetic gotcha you did with Charlie Gold. And even then, again, that gotcha was pathetic. It wasn't even that. Also, stop telling people that I shared your news back in November. Yeah? I debunked that in the last big video I made on you. Stop lying Shani. Stop lying to the one or two people on the internet who still think highly of you. There must be more brain damage than me at this point. If you don't want videos make about you, get off the internet. So ladies and gents, that's this video. Another documentary smashed and done. But before I play us out on the brand new dish track, I'd like to thank my drama investigators <laughs> out there for helping. Wages are in the mail, guys. Sent first class. <laughs> but seriously, massive, massive thank yous to Omegon, Tarabub, Necrosal Collins, Luna, Nufi, Dragnaut, Foxy Veritas, Fab Fit Geeky, Burnt Toast, Charlie Gold, and everyone who sent clips, videos, streams, screenshots, or passed on snippets of info. And of course, thank you to all my patrons and channel members for supporting this channel, me, my family, and my content. Thank you to all the broken toys, the broken haters, my fellow cult community members. Without all of you, this would have not been worth the effort. So again, thank you. And here's to a brand new dish track dedicated to you, the IRA Talex subscribers, the Broken Toys. Enjoy. Peace. All right, let's see here. I am super excited. I believe um, this is going to be strictly Shani dis related. So, uh, yeah, we're just gonna pop this baby open. Hopefully my computer. All right, gonna react to this diss track by Alex. Always a good time. All right, I guess, uh, <laughs> here we go. Let's hope it's not too bad. For his video premiere, so. Let's see what that's like, shall we? Jenny! What have you done now? It's over! You're fucking finished! You're
done! And that goes for you too, Red! This shit has got me burning I wanna stop it now And now the anger's building You better hold me down The wolf inside me's howling Up at the black night sky The older story's turning To open up your eyes I shall succeed and conquer To expose all your lies Doxing and crying are just Some of your awful crimes The tables keeps on turning I'm here to put things right So Shani, fuck the love for this Irate Alex Ride Sit down Shani Take a seat with me Shani Sit down Shani Take a seat Sit down Shani Take a seat with me Shani Sit down Shani Sit down I'm here to save your kids and I'm here to save your eyes I'm here to save the internet I'm here to stop the lies I'm here to save your kids, yeah I'm here to save your eyes I'm here to save the internet I'm here to stop the lies Cloud chasing with your kids needs Is never ever right Always having to see them Put up and lose the fight I can't stand here and keep watching They need to see the lights I have to keep on going I'll stand up and I'll fight Sit down Shani Take a seat with me Shani Sit down Shani Take a seat Sit down Shani Take a seat with me Shani Sit down Shani Sit down This wheel it keeps on turning I have to stand my ground This tales that you Written, I simply won't allow Your lies, I will expose them Say your YouTube's goodbyes This is the final chapter Of this unpleasant ride I'm here to save your kids And I'm here to save your eyes I'm here to save the internet I'm here to stop the lies I'm here to save your kids, yeah I'm here to save your eyes I'm here to save the internet I'm here to stop the lies Sit down Shani Take a seat with me Shani Sit down Shani Take a seat Sit down Shani Take a seat with me Shani Sit down Shani Sit down Sit down Shani Take a seat with me, Shani. Sit down, Shani. Take a seat. Sit down, Shani. Take a seat with me, Shani. Sit down, Shani. Sit down. Sit down, Shani. Take a seat with me, Shani. Sit down, Shani. Take a seat. Sit down, Shani. Take a seat with me, Shani. Sit down, Shani. Sit down. I like that. First of all, that beat slaps. Um, Alex, did you create this beat? Cause I like this. Shani, have several seats. We've been saying it for too long now, and now it's you're making a joke out of yourself and out of your family. Well, you've been making a joke out of your family, but have several several seats and get some help and an exorcism later she was fire oh my god like the lyrics and the like i need this as like an apple tunes download so i can like rage at the gym oh wow my god that was so good oh good job alex <laughs> <laughs> always, always good to listen to a diss track. Jenny! What have you done now? It's over! You're 
fucking finished! You're done! And that goes for you too, Red! This shit has got me burning I wanna stop it now And now the anger's building You better hold me down The wolf inside me's howling Up at the black night sky The oldest story's turning To open up your eyes I shall succeed and conquer To expose all your lies Doxing and crying are just some of your awful